Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. Listen on today's show, I'm going to be talking about countdown to the end, 10 end time signs that are happening right now or about to happen. I believe that we're living at the end of the end times. I want to prove that to you on today's show. Welcome to the Tipping Point. Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. And today I want to talk to you about countdown to the end, what I believe is about to happen, the things that are happening in the world right now, but what I believe is about to happen. I want to talk about 10 end time signs that are happening right now. Now my book that I wrote, Tipping Point, uh, my first book on the end times, uh, the subtitle is The End Is Here. And this released a couple of years ago. This has been a best-selling book. If you're reading something that's just giving you the, you know, the foundation of the end times. This is a good book to read, and I'll be referring to this in this teaching a little bit. But the end is here, and I, that's not my opinion. It's a scriptural fact. The Bible, I'm going to use scripture today to prove to you we're at the end. We're at the end of the end times. And my daughter and I wrote this book, We're the Missing People. And this is a book to leave behind. I mean, I, I'm going to say in this message, I never set dates. I just believe we're at the end. I believe that we're at the end of the end. I think that the things that are happening, not just related to Israel, especially related to Israel, because Israel is the super sign of the end times, but the things that are happening in the world right now, they're empirical. They're, they're empirical. They're measurable. There's, there's something that are telling us in black and white, Jesus Christ is about to come. When the rapture happens, it could happen any time. When the rapture happens, there's going to be billions of people left behind, and that's what this book is for. Well, I want to talk in this show about countdown to the end, 10 signs of the end times that are happening right now or already have happened that tell us we're at the end. And by the way, when I, when I was preparing for this, I could have used 40 or 50. I'm just using the top 10. Now we're going to go from 10 to 1. We're going to go sign number 10 all the way to sign number 1. These are not necessarily in order of importance, but they generally mean that number 1 is the big sign that's happening right now. So sign number 10 is signs in the sun, moon, and stars. At Luke 21, Jesus said, They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. By, by the way, the first thing he says there is the uh, Jews will be scattered around the world once Jerusalem is uh, taken in AD 70, that happened. And it said Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by Gentiles until the times of Gentiles were fulfilled. Well, that was 1967. The Jews lost Jerusalem in AD 70. They got it back in the Six Day War in 1967. So that, that scripture's already been fulfilled. I'm not even using that in the top 10. But here's what I'm saying. Jesus said there'll be signs when the end comes. There'll be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Genesis 1 says God created the sun, moon, and stars for signs, for supernatural signs and seasons. Signs means it's pointing to something. It means God is going to communicate to us through the stars. Well, when Jesus came the first time, there was a star that led the wise men to Jesus. God uses the stars. He's done it throughout history. Well, there have been some incredible things that have happened in the last 75 years in the heavenlies. And a lot of people don't know about these things, but and this is something, again, I talk about in Tipping Point. I do a, a chapter in here about signs in the stars. And so Joel chapter 2 says, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Well, that's talking about the end, the second coming, the great and awesome day of the Lord. There's going to be, the sun's going to go black, and the moon's going to be turned to blood. Well, you know, it's going to happen, the Bible says. Well, a lot of people didn't know what that meant until Mark Biltz wrote a book called Blood Moons. And Mark is a, a pastor in Washington. He's a, re a regular guest of ours here on Tipping Point. And so he is a, a, a astronomy buff, and he got on a software program and started looking back in history at lunar eclipses. Now, a blood moon, when the turn blood moon turns blood or red, that's a blood moon. That's a, a lunar eclipse. And so Mark just went back and just how many times were there significant lunar eclipses in history? And what he found is four times there were four 
blood moons, tetrad of blood moons, two years back to back, all on Jewish feast days, significant Jewish feast days. And this has happened four times in the last 500 years. And they're all significant. Beginning in 1493 and 1494, okay? 1493 and 1494, there were four lunar eclipses on Jewish holy days. In 1949 and 1950, there were four lunar eclipses on Jewish holy days. It happened again in 1967, 1968, 2014, and 2015. You say, again, I'm going to show you signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Okay, well, what would be the significance of blood moons happening? By the way, there are also solar eclipses in there. That's when the, the sun doesn't give its light. There are also solar eclipses on Jewish holy days also in those tetrad of blood moons. So what is the significance? Well, Let's go back to uh, 1493 and 1494. What happened at that point in time that was significant to the Jewish people? Because all these relate to the Jews. In 1492, King, Is uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain expelled the Jews. And very, very serious thing. And uh, now from AD 70 until 1492, the Jews were just scattered around the world. There was no place for them. And so uh, Christopher Columbus was a Jew. And you can, you can Google this. You can look this up. He was a Murano. They called him a Murano. A Murano was a Jew who pretended to be a Catholic. But he was a Jew. And his voyage to the New World is widely believed to have been financed by two wealthy Jewish men who told him to go and find a place for the Jews to live. Okay, And America, of course, has become the most uh, the haven for the Jews for many, many years uh, and supportive of Israel like no other nation on earth. Jew, the Israel became a nation in 1948, 1949 and 1950. Of course, they became a nation in 1948 in one day on May 14th of 1948, but they didn't set up their government until 1949, 1950. During that period of time, there's four blood moons, tetrad of blood moons. Then they got Jerusalem back. They didn't have Jerusalem. They got half of Jerusalem back in 1948. They didn't get the whole city back until 1967. 1967, 1968, there's four more blood moons. Okay. Then the last set of blood moons, this won't happen again for 500 years, okay? And so the last set of blood moons was 2014, 2015. So what is the significance of the, the blood moons? I'm going to show you signs in the sun, moon, and stars, Jesus said. Then Joel says, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, the moon is going to turn blood and the sun will give its light. Okay, so what's the significance? In 1493 and 1494, God began to gather back the holy people. In 1949 and 1950, he brought back the Holy Land. In 1967 and 1968, he brought back the Holy City. In 2014-15, he began to bring back the Holy Temple. This is the significance. In 2014 and 15, the activity on the Temple Mount exploded by the Jews. The Jews weren't allowed up there for many years. But they began to go back up there. And of course, they're making preparations to build the Temple. And I'll talk about that more in just a minute. In addition to the blood moons, that's one thing. On September the 23rd of 2017, the Revelation 12 sign happened. I saw a woman clothed with the sun. The moon was at her feet. She was giving birth. She had 12 stars on her head. The dragon sought her out. That's, I've done a program on that. I'll do another one on that sometime soon. It's a phenomenal sign that actually happened in the sky. Revelation chapter 12. Also, a great American eclipse. Now, I write about all these now in the book, Tipping Point. Great American eclipse, August 21st of 20, 2017. There was an eclipse all the way from Oregon to South Carolina, all the way across the United States. Now, it's, it's, it's not a common thing. It happened in 1918. And by the way, in 1918, 50 million people died of the Spanish flu. 675,000 Americans died of the Spanish flu. And there was a great American eclipse at the same period of time. It happened in 1776. The last time before 1918, it happened in 1776. I don't have to tell you what happened in 1776. It happened in 2017. Now it's going to happen again April the 8th of 2024, coming up just here in a few months. It's going to begin in Texas and go all the way to Maine, and it's going to mark an X over the United States of America. And this, this is kind of, and the Jews believe that a blood moon is an omen to the Jews, but a solar eclipse is a, a omen to the world. Okay, over Carbondale, Illinois, that's where the X is going to be, the center of the X is going to be, uh, literally over a word, a, a town, a Salem Road, 
but it's going to mark an X like this. So these are some signs. These are some signs that have happened. There's more signs than that that have happened. But number 10 thing I'm saying is that these things are happening and have already happened are signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Sign number nine is worldwide unrest and anxiety. This goes back to Luke 21. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars on the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Right now, every continent on earth is in distress among wars, political turmoil, social decay, and violence. Every continent on the earth. You can't find one that's not in turmoil. 39% of Americans, I'm not talking about Christians, 39% of Americans believe we're living in the end times. And anxiety, depression, and suicide have skyrocketed in the last several years. It's because of the, the times that we're living in. This young generation right now, they say this is the most depressed generation of all times in America. And a lot of that's just because of the, the society that we're living in. People are discouraged, they're depressed. Suicide is off the charts. And let me say, we have the answer. And the answer is Jesus. The answer is also helping people understand what's going on. We did our conference, every year we did our End Times Conference here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. I was shocked at how many young people were there. Is I couldn't believe it. All these young people, teenagers coming up to me telling me, we watch your show, we read your books. It helps them to understand what's going on and to be encouraged and to have perspective rather than being overwhelmed and being depressed and suicidal. Would you help us to reach more people? When you become a subscriber, endtimes.com for $7, you're helping us to grow this ministry and reach other people. I don't want you to just think about yourself when you do that, even though you're gonna be blessed and get all the information that we have without commercials. I want you to think about helping us help other people with your $7 a month uh, gift. You can also go to endtimes.com and you can give a gift of any amount. You can give a monthly gift or a recurring gift. But I encourage you to help us today to help other people in these critical times. Let's go back to the show. Perplexity means when it says that the, there'll be distress of nations with perplexity, it just means there's no answers. There, there, people are confused. That's the way it is right now. The Middle East, you know, you look at what's happening in Ukraine, China, you know, America, the border, whatever you're looking at, the, the economy, there's just no answers. Okay, so that one's true. Sign number eight, immorality and violence. Jesus said in Matthew 24, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven but my father only. As the days of Noah were, so also be the coming of the Son of Man. As in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. It did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So Jesus says it was in the days of Noah in Luke 17, he talks about as it was in the days of Lot also. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Genesis chapter 6 says, the, this is talking about the days of Noah, the earth also was corrupt before God, that means sexually immoral, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. So. Again, Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, well, the world right now is filled with immorality and violence. I mean, just, you, you don't even have to make that point. But let me go back and talk about the timing that Jesus is talking about. He says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the, the days of the Son of Man. Okay, in the days before the flood. Okay, so I talk about a pre-trib rapture. Um, some people say, well, the rapture is going to be at the end of the tribulation. Jesus said, in the days before the flood, there's buying, selling, marrying and given in marriage. In other words, business as usual. That's not, at the end of the tribulation, the world has been, it's ma massively judged and destroyed, okay? And billions of people have died. Jesus is talking about a pre-tribulation rapture. And he says, two men will be in the field, one taken, the other left. The word taken there is the word paralambano. It means to receive unto yourself. And so this is the rapture. And so we're seeing right now the fulfillment of a world filled with violence and immorality. Sign number seven, apostasy in the church. Jesus told a parable uh, in Matthew 24 that we just read. Jesus is talking about the signs of the end times. And then in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus tells two parables and a true story about how to prepare for his coming. And the first parable he tells is the parable of the 10 virgins. 
And he said there were 10 virgins, they all had lamps, but only the wise virgins had oil in their lamps. And the bridegroom came and, and said, you know, prepare for the bridegroom, he's coming. The five wise virgins were prepared because they had their lamps lit and they had oil for their lamps. The foolish virgins were not ready. And the wise virgin said, we can't share our oil with you. You have to go buy some. So they went and bought it. And they came back and knocked on the door. And the bridegroom said to them, I don't know you. I'm not letting you in. I, I have no relationship with you. I believe that the virgins represent the church because they represented themselves to the bridegroom, just the way the churches today represent themselves to Jesus. Okay. And Jesus said, now when I return, half the church will be true and half the church will be false. I believe that's true today. And we've seen an apostasy in the church in the last 40 years that's just absolutely incredible. Let me talk about the Methodist Church for just a minute. So far, right now, 7,286 uh, Methodist churches out of 30,000 United Methodist congregations, many in the U.S. South and Midwest, have received approval to disaffiliate from the denomination. This has been happening since 2019, according to an unofficial tally by the United Methodist News Service. I want to say how much, how proud I am of those 7,000 Methodist churches that have disaffiliated because they've done it based on the Word of God. Now, the oil is the Word of God, okay? The light of God's Word. And we have homosexuality, gay marriage, wokeism, transsexuality, all this stuff invading the church. And many churches choose the world over the Word. They choose to please the people rather than pleasing God. And it's a, it's a tough thing. For a lot of churches, this is a tough situation. But, but I'm saying to the, these Methodist churches, congratulations for standing on the Word of God. My neighbor, uh, for many years, was a Presbyterian. Many great Presbyterian churches, too. And they disaffiliated from the, from the Presbyterian denomination over the same thing. And he was an elder, and he said, we, we couldn't take it anymore. We disaffiliated. So what we're seeing right now is a division in the church. And I believe that about half the churches right now, according to Jesus' word, are true, standing on the word of God, preaching the word of God, and half are false. That's another thing that's true if Jesus came today. Sign number six, the Antichrist spirit of deception. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So it says that the Antichrist, it says, he who now restrains will do so till he, capital H, is taken out of the way. That's the Holy Spirit in the church. The rapture removes the church from the earth. We're the restraining force. Now, the Holy Spirit stays here. People are still getting saved during the tribulation. But the church is removed. It says, then the Antichrist is real. Then the lawless one will be revealed. It says, and his coming is directly associated with the activity of Satan's deception. He's going to come with all power lying in unrighteous deception. And I said this earlier this year, AI is a supernatural force for deception. And I said earlier in 2023, I said that AI is announcing the arrival of the Antichrist. I still believe that, is that we see deception in the world. You can't say boys and girls. You know, I mean, they're telling teachers, you can't say boys and girls. It's, it's, it's politically incorrect. In, in California right now, they passed a law that toy stores have to have a gender neutral section. They passed the law. And so, you know, Target and all these different stores out there, they're trying to shove all this stuff on us. It is unbelievable to me the level of deception that's going on. And the sexualization of children is the most shocking thing in my lifetime that has happened. The deception that's happening in the world. You can check that box. Sign number five is the Psalm 83 war. The Psalm 83 war, and the Psalm 83 talks about a war with Israel's immediate neighbors where they attack Israel and they, they say, we're going to cut Israel off from being a nation that still exists no more. Well, that's happening before us. The headlines last week were Israel is fighting a seven-front war. And so they're surrounded exactly the way that Psalm 83 says. Okay, so the theme of the war, by the way, is to destroy Israel. And Iran is the one orchestrating everything. Israel's fighting uh, Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Syria and Iraq. They're fighting Iran's proxies. 
uh, and Islamic Jihad. Uh, they're fighting the Houthis in Yemen. They're fighting terrorists in the West Bank. And of course, they haven't had direct conflict yet with Iran, but I think that's just about to happen. And so the Psalm 83 war has begun. This is what we're seeing happen right now. Seven fronts. They're completely surrounded now by their enemies, exactly the way that Psalm 83 says. And it's, it's escalating. It's not going down. The, the Hezbollah is firing more rockets. There's more attacks coming from Syria. Of course, Israel killed these 11 Iranian leaders. So they bombed the Syrian airport or the Damascus airport, killed seven, the 11 leaders. Uh, Iran just sent a warship to the Red Sea. This is a very bad thing. Now, l- let me just make this comment because if I'm going to make a prediction for 2024, this isn't a prophecy. This is just a prediction. America has been attacked. Israel's been attacked. Hamas has been attacked. Hezbollah has been attacked. Syria has been attacked. There's only one actor. Iraq has been attacked. The Yemen, Yemen has been attacked. Of course, they've had the raids in West Bank. Um, the only person that had been attacked is Iran. Iran is orchestrating all this trouble, and they're the only ones that have not been directly attacked. And I, I'm thankful for the support that the United States has given Israel militarily. Iran has uh, attacked our forces in Syria and Iraq over 100 times with hardly a response. And I, the Biden administration has done so much for Iran, it's truly unbelievable, releasing billions of dollars to them to finance their terror operations and giving hardly a response to direct attacks on military, U.S. military installations, injuring U.S. forces. I believe that 2024 could very likely be the year where Iran gets punched in the nose, where they have a direct attack, either from the United States or Israel or both. They're now enriching uranium. They publicly announced this, that they're enriching uranium at 60%. And it's a short step from there to weapons grade uh, uranium to make a nuclear weapon. Of course, they already have the delivery mechanism, a hypersonic missile that can reach Israel in 400 seconds. And so this, this is just, it's out of control. Uh, Israel is in a dire strait related to if they did attack Iran, but they're in a dire strait if they don't. And at some point, it just becomes an existential decision that we attack them and see what happens rather than letting them attack us and we don't exist any longer. And so this is a very, very serious situation that's not going away. Hey, thank you for joining me today. Be sure and subscribe to this channel and also like this channel so that other people will be able to see it. When you subscribe, it just means you're going to get all the things that come out from us. And I want you to now the full show today, the full episode is on endtimes.com. I want you to see that. And listen, we've got tons of content on endtimes.com. It's not just this podcast. We've got all kinds of content that I want you to be able to see. And you can get this entire show without commercials. Okay for $7 a month, $77 a year. It's a blessing to us. It helps us to grow this ministry. It supports this ministry, but also it'll be a blessing to you. It'll be the best $7 you've ever spent. Endtimes.com, become a subscriber right now.